take a leisurely float on the unexpected side. Sea and Okinawa boat tours are in Georgetown through October. Boat rides are available Wednesdays through Sundays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. They offer one-hour guided historical tours along the first mile of the CNO Canal. Drift back in time to learn about the unexpected stories, technology, and culture of the canal and its people with scenic Georgetown as your backdrop. To plan your ride through history, visit georgetownheritage.org slash boat. Today on CityCast DC, um, so I think the word iconic gets used way too much in DC, but in the case of Ben's Chili Bowl, the U Street mecca for late night half smokes, it actually fits. Bridget and I sat down with Virginia Ali, the matriarch of the restaurant, which turns 65 today. We talked about the early days serving Howard University students. We talked about living through the fires of 1968. And we talked about what business is like in spiffed up 21st century U Street. Today is Tuesday, August 22nd. I'm Michael Schaefer, and here's what DC is talking about. Miss Virginia Ali, a DC icon, owner and founder of Ben's Chili Bowl. Thank you so much for being here. It is such an honor. Well, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. So you turn 90 later this year. Amazing. Yes. Ben's Chili Bowl turns 65. Yeah. We know that you were in your early 20s when you first started Ben's. Yeah. What was your vision for Ben's back then? Well, I met my husband who came from Trinidad. He came to this country to matriculate at our universities, and he started the University of Nebraska and then came to Howard to go to dental school. Now, he worked his way through college by working in restaurants. So when we met, I was working at the bank down the street, a minority-owned, family-owned bank up until now, still down there. I worked there. And we saw each other there, but of course that was 19, what, 56, 50, late 56, 50, early 57, and we were formally introduced. There's a cute little story about how that all happened, depending on how much time you have. I would love to hear I it. I really love a good meet you. <laughs> Well, so he came to the bank and working in the community at the time, and I served him. And then he came back the next day, and I served him. And the third day, I noticed the other girls were not busy, but he's standing there waiting, so I served him again. This time he had the nerve to write a little note. Please call me, and some phone number. Ben Alley. <laughs> that was 1957. We, I thought he was cute, but we don't call men back there. So I didn't call. But the bank closed at 3 every day, and at 2.45, he called the bank, asked for me by name, because my name is in the window. And I'm called to the phone. I go out to the phone, and I said, hello. He said, Hi, this is Ben Alley. Why didn't you call me? Excuse me? <laughs> I don't know you, sir. I don't call men I don't know. He said, well, what would you like to know? And he went Sweet on talker. to give me his life story about where he came from, and we made a date, and the rest is history. So he was in dental school, and then he, he started... Was, he, he didn't finish he, dental and school. And he all started the restaurant. He walked on an elevator one day. The floor wasn't there. He injured his back severely. He did not finish dental school. But he had worked his way through college, working in restaurants, so... He knew the restaurant business, and when, when he proposed and asked me if I'd be willing to partner with him in a restaurant, yes. I also learned working at the bank that I really, really, really enjoy people and working with different people every day, all day. So the restaurant business would be perfect for that. And then we decided, okay, we're going to open a little restaurant. You got the ideas, you know what kind of restaurant we're going to open? Well, yeah, I've got that, a very special chili recipe that I think you're going to love. Okay, we tried that out. Yeah, that's really good. Well, I'm curious, you said that, you know, you realized that you loved working with people. While we've been sitting here, all your employees call you Ma. You have this connection with them, it seems. What has that been like, fostering this connection with so many different people over the years? Well, you know, we knew we wanted this to be a family place, a family-invited kind of place where people felt welcome to be here. We knew we wanted to be a part of a community. And that 
you know, that's just fun, meeting people. So you get to meet all the people in the neighborhood and you begin to bring on staff members and team members and I'm accustomed to them being here for years. I have one that was with me 45 years. Wow. You know, when you like people and you treat people the way you'd like to be treated, you just have a good time. You tell your story, you want to hear their story. And it's just been a wonderful experience for me. And the Chili Bowl has given me the privilege of serving people from all walks of life. All walks of life. We've served presidents and judges and professionals and sports people and media, you name it, we've served them construction workers and street sweepers, but they're all just people. So we're sitting in the restaurant right now and all of the, I understand all the tables and the chairs, and this is all original. Did, you guys didn't go through some trendy, you know, 70s, 80s oh, yeah. renovation. When we finally found the place we thought would be ideal to open a restaurant, this was still a segregated city when I came in 52, and that was beginning to change, but we knew that this Black Broadway out here, which we call Black Broadway, Pearl Bailey gave it that name, but because it was the entertainment center for African-American people. We couldn't go downtown to the movies or to dinner, but we didn't need to because we had a fabulous community here. Howard University sits in our midst, been there for what, 135 or 40 years. Highly educated black people in the neighborhood, proud, classy, self-supported black community it was another good experience yeah. when I reflect on that. During the time, I just lived it. But it was classy. I mean, you, you're here and you've got your three theaters in three blocks. So when the first rate movie was released in Hollywood and it came to the theater downtown that we couldn't go to, it came to one of ours the same day. Yeah. to eat? Well, listen up, because Metropolitan Washington Restaurant Week, presented by Restaurant Association Metropolitan Washington, returns to wrap up the end of summer from Monday, August 28th through Sunday, September 3rd, and leads into DC Jazz Festival. Metropolitan Washington Restaurant Week is the area's signature dining promotion, with 250 plus restaurants participating, including first-time participants at DCA and Dulles International Airport, expanding the promotion to all arriving and departing our region for summer travels. Just go to the Restaurant Week website at rwdmv.com to view participating locations, menus, and to make reservations. Mike, a little birdie told me that somebody recently had a birthday. It is true. Although I thought you were going to say uh, John Riggins and Barack Obama, both of whom share my birthday. Oh, uh, uh, that's a uh, good list of people to share birthdays with. So you, Barack Obama, and CityCast DC all have similar, if not the same, birthdays. Right. So, And we are celebrating uh, the CityCast anniversary, doing something live. On August 28th, we are both going to be there for a live anniversary taping and party. I can't wait. It's all happening at Sunny's Pizza in Parkview. It's going to be an anniversary party and live taping. It starts at 5 p.m. and there's going to be a natural wine tasting by PlantWise. Monday night, taping starts at 6.30 and it'll kind of be a, a nice fall foliage looking event. We're going to be talking about DC's fall fairs. So getting us ready for the cooler fall weather, which y'all know is my favorite season. And we will be joined by Chelsea Ceruzzo, formerly of Axios, now my political colleague. I can't wait. I'm excited to get to hang with you and celebrate both your birthday, City Cast DC's birthday, Barack Obama's birthday, all in one spot. What has it been like to have been here for so long, to have seen U Street go from Black Broadway to what it is today, which is so different? What has that been like? It's been challenging, very challenging. It started with well, we went through the civil rights movement when I had the pleasure of sitting with Martin Luther King out there a few times as he came and enjoyed his chili cheeseburger and would talk about his dream that he wanted this country to become. I had the privilege of being him and President Obama was there. But after the civil rights movement, and he brought that crowd of people to protest the injustices of black people in 1963, and then we heard, we, Ben and I were there, of course, and 
that wonderful speech, I have a dream speech, and this wonderful day where he brought 250,000 people here without one single incident. So we were so motivated and so inspired and so thrilled to walk away from that knowing that change is going to come. For the years after that, Ben's went through some very, it was a difficult neighborhood to, to make a profit in. Businesses closed, they were boarded up buildings and torn down buildings and it was just a mess. And we waited and waited. We expect the city's going to do something. Somebody's got to do something. Now we are integrated, of course. Middle class began to move away. The whites took a flight straight out of town. And uh, we did become a ghetto. Heron moved in first, and then crack cocaine moved in, and we became a real serious ghetto. And the Washington Post described 14th and U, murder capital of the world. The drugs were everywhere. It was really, really sad. How did you weather that, that those periods? You know, you just have faith in yourself and your business, and you, we were here, we were very supportive of our community. You know, this was a place where they knew they could come and be safe. We never closed except Thanksgiving Day and Christmas. It didn't matter if it rained, if the snow was deep, whatever, we were somehow found a way to be here. And always had two or three employees that were willing to come along with us. So we were stable in the community. And if someone came for a little help, someone comes in and said, I don't have enough money to get my mother, grandmother's high blood pressure prescription filled or whatever they needed. We helped them. We helped with many ways, but that's what you do. So it's really a story of community. Oh my goodness, yes. Oh yes, absolutely. I miss that so much. Not because we don't still have a community, but because the community is young yeah. and I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> so then the city says, all right, we're going to fix everything by building a metro. Right. Don't worry about it. It won't be a problem. Let's just say this. The riots took place, I call it an uprising, took place in 1968. We started the construction for the subway in 1988. That's 20 years. That's a long time. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I've got faith in the city. This is the nation's capital. We were running the world. It's got to come back. I just didn't think it would take 20 years. Yeah. But it did. And then when they finally did the survey to do the subway construction, they found only three businesses in the immediate vicinity had survived. Ben's Chili Bowl, Industrial Bank, and Lee's Flower Shop. Wow. Both of them now being operated by young people that weren't even around over 10 years old during the riots. <laughs> So I'm the old, the old one around. And you've worked at two of the three places. <laughs> Once they opened that subway, I had a banner put up there, a man to come with a crane and put a big old banner across there. We survived Metro. If we can pause. Where are you going? No, no, no. This um, guy, he's, he came. This is how guests take it because she's a celebrity. He's about to lose and his what? mind. Remember Billy? Remember Billy? Remember Billy? From oh. Texas? No, not that Billy, from Miami. He lost his mother and found it. His mother's here, and they're leaving back from Miami, and he's like losing Have his mind. Have him come back. I have a question for you, if you don't mind. Please. Obviously, Miss Virginia Ali means a lot to you and to your mom. Oh, they have the same name. Like, oh, my goodness. Virginia. Wait, what? Virginia. Oh, Dr. Virginia. Yeah. Okay, so wow. So I have that picture up in my house. Oh, that's beautiful. What, what makes Ben's and Miss Virginia such an icon to you? Like, Well, I'm from Washington. Okay, I moved to Miami, <clears throat> oh, this is great. So I own a hedge fund. And so I moved from Washington, D.C. to Miami to start a hedge fund. But my heart is in Washington. Washington. Any, night? any sports teams, anything, I'm a true Washingtonian. And nothing's more Washington, D.C. than Ben's, really. I was just, I brought my mother here. She's out there for the very first time. And I always insist, when I get off the airplane, the first place I go is Ben's Chili Bowl. In fact, it, kind of do it at the airport, and then I do it here also. <laughs> so, but I mean, really, there's nothing else. I'm so happy that the tradition has been here. I can't think of anything else that says DC, the events, and the community that we have here. 
What is it like to hear this? This, this oh, impact you have it. on I people. Oh, I love it. I love it. I often wonder what's it. But I'm, I'm, I look around sometimes. And it's just a little hot dog place. <laughs> <laughs> but also, what makes it special is Virginia herself. I mean, she is magical. She's beautiful. And uh, I just can never believe the amount of time that she takes to come say hello to me. I, I love. I love people. I'm so glad to see you, darling. Yes. So glad to see you, and thank you for bringing thank your you mom. Thank you so much. Of course. Who, of all the people that you've had here that you've served, who sticks out to you in your mind? Oh, my goodness. I don't really, I've enjoyed all of them. And, of course, it was a pleasure to be here with Dr. Martin Luther King. It was indeed a pleasure to be here to witness the inauguration of an African-American president, mm -hmm. something that at my age wasn't even possible, in my opinion. That wasn't even possible at that point. That would happen after I'm gone. So we had that pleasure. But um, I love people. I've enjoyed them all. And I'd like to welcome them back, everybody coming back. We've been so blessed with people enjoying my little place. But we want them to walk into a place where there's a smile and a greeting and happy to see you. Because I really am happy to see you. If I have helped somebody along the way, then I have not lived my life in vain. That was my daddy's favorite thing. Well, it's clear that you have done that. You have helped so many people. This place has become an institution. You are a beloved icon of this community. We're so blessed to have you here. Well, I'm blessed. I'm blessed myself. I really am blessed. And now for some quick news. I'm here with our audio producer, Julia. What's happening, Julia? High-powered parents have accused Northwest Washington Little League President Ricky Davenport Thomas of cheating. The accusations were sent via email as a 40-page letter written like a legal brief. The parents said Davenport Thomas broke eligibility rules in order to poach players to stack his own team. Davenport Thomas rejected the allegations. Also, homicides in D.C. are rising to levels we haven't seen in decades, but in other major cities, the number of killings is decreasing. Local officials and criminologists are confused why we are the outlier. One speculation is the disconnect between our city-run police department and the federal-run criminal justice system. Another guess is the deserted downtown struggling to recover from the pandemic. And lastly, D.C. residents eat dinner later than any U.S. state, according to data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Our peak dinner time? It's 7.10 p.m. Nationally, dinner time is at around 6.19 p.m., while some states like Pennsylvania gather as early as 5.37 p.m. Of course, D.C. is much smaller, indicating less variation in work schedules and commute than most states. But still, how very European chic of us. That's all for today here on CityCast DC. I'm Michael Schaefer from Politico. I want to thank those of you who have subscribed to our show and sent in feedback. We've been blown away by the support. And if you haven't, uh, shame on you. Kidding. But subscribe now and check out our morning newsletter too. We'll be back on Thursday with more news from around the city. Bye. Is this you and Tay Diggs looking like a couple? Yeah. <laughs> like, y'all are hugged up. No, that's Tommy Davidson. Oh, Tommy Davidson. Y'all look like a couple. Uh -huh.